Hello, it's Keith here, and this is the first of my 6309 assembly programming tutorials. What is the 6309? Well, Hitachi made their own 6809 clone, um, and they didn't really tell anyone at the time, but they actually added some extra functionality. Now, the reason they didn't tell anyone is they were they considered it better to have a claim of a 6809 compatible than to claim they'd added their own weird things. But many weird things they did indeed add, and it, I personally find it quite interesting because they uh, they basically started to add some potentially 32-bit functionality to what was essentially an 8-bit processor. They added a lot more registers, and, and they added they added the ability to combine these together to make 32 bits. Now, now, while the 6309 was never really used in any commercial computers, the VCC um, Tandy Coco emulator can emulate the swapping of the processor for a 6309 CPU. And we're going to use that today to have a look at this extra functionality. Now, obviously, there's not really much practical use for doing this, but I personally find it quite fascinating to see all of this extra functionality that had been added in secret to the 6809 processor in the form of the 6309. And I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at it and maybe imagine what could have been. Now, if you're interested in 6809, you could consider buying my book. This is the first one, but the second one covers ARM Thumb, 658016, 6809, PDP 11, and Risk 5 So you could consider doing that and supporting this content and learning more about 6809. 809 at least. Now, with regards to 6309, we're going to be going over the basics of what the system offers today, and we're going to have some examples of the new registers. Now, the 6809, of course, had an accumulator A and a B, and it would combine these together to form a 16-bit D accumulator. Now, the 6309 added another pair of accumulators, which are known as E and F. These are 8 bits, and these are combined to form a 16-bit word accumulator, I guess we could call it W, and so we now have two 16-bit accumulators, A, B forming D, and the new E and F forming W. These four accumulators can be combined together to co produce a quad accumulator, which we could call Q, 32-bit Q. And these take the form with A and B making the top half part, E and F making the bottom half, and these will be forming a 32-bit accumulator, if you will. Now, there aren't many commands that work in 32-bit mode, but as I say, they do at least exist. Now, another couple of interesting registers that are added. There is a new mode register, which we don't really need very often. We can turn on something known as native mode, However, we don't actually really need to do this very often. Surprisingly, we can use all of these new 63809 commands without turning native mode on at all. And really, this is just altering the way that the interrupts actually occur on the processor. So not something we really need to worry about. In addition, though, we do have two new strange registers that are worth mentioning. There is the V register, that, which is known as the transfer value. Now, this can't be used as an accumulator. We can only really transfer a value into it or take a value out of it. So maybe as a temporary store instead of the stack, if we need to do that. Um, one interesting thing about the transfer value is apparently it survives a reset. So if we reset our processor, um, it will still be in memory. So um, if you need to do that, maybe uh, something that could be useful. The final one is the zero register. Now, this is something that's become quite popular on MIPS type processors, on RISC processors, where um, there is a register that is a hardwired zero, and this can be useful for um, quickly setting a register to zero or for disposing of a value if we want to actually get rid of a value for some reason. Um, now, on this processor, um, officially, it's marked as the value zero, but on you might find the assembler you're using uses the value Z, the name Z as the zero register. I think a number zero was causing problems with the ASW assembler I'm using, but um, anyway, you will find that available as well. So we've got all of these new registers, and it's not just, of course, new registers. We have a variety of new exciting commands we can use with them, and we're going to start looking at those today. Now, I'm going to be using the VCC emulator today, and if we go to the configuration and select config, and we go to CPU, well, you can change the processor. So the default would be the 6809, but we are, we're going to be selecting the Hitachi 6309 to gain the extra functionality today. And I've got this um, this monitor function, which I've written, which dumps all of the registers to the screen, except the zero register, because the zero register is always going to have the value of zero. So that would be a very silly thing to do. Anyway, let's go over to our source code and let's see what options we've got and what we're going to be doing with our new registers. So the first test we're going to be doing is this new registers test. And we're going to be testing some of the new and old values here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to load 
the A and B registers, which of course existed before, they're eight bit registers with 11 and 12 in hexadecimal. And we're gonna load the new E and F registers with values 13 and 14. Now, it should be noted that when we use the new registers, we're actually adding an extra byte to the resulting commands in a lot of cases. So if you only need one register, you should always use one of the A and B registers. And it should only be where you really need more registers without you know, avoiding using the stack or and things like that, or where you need to use the 32-bit functionality, that you should use the E and F. So stick to using A and B where possible. Anyway, so what we're doing here is we're loading values into those registers, and then we are going to show them to the screen with our monitor function. And you can see here that the D register, which is made up of A and B combined, contains the 11 and 12 that we loaded in here. And the new W register, which is the 13-bit com combination of E and F, contains the 13 and 14 that we loaded in there. So we are able to do that. We're also, of course, able to store these back to memory. So we're storing those back with these commands here. And you can see we have loaded 11, 12, 13, and 14 back to memory here. But as I say, it is worth noting, if we look at the listing file here, here is the load A and B commands here. And these are two bytes, one byte for the command and one byte for the value. But the load E and load F commands, you can see there's this extra one one byte in front and you're going to actually see it's the same byte code for load a and b there's an extra byte been added and so as i say it will actually be less efficient to do load e and load f than load a and load b so you know use them only sparingly when a and b are doing other things for you so that's how we can load our new 8-bit registers from the source code here now as well as loading 8-bit registers of course we can load in 16-bit registers we could load d before but we can now load w and we can also store d and store w and that's exactly what we're going to do here we're going to load 2324 and 3536 here and you can see d has been loaded 2324 and w has been loaded 3536 here so we're able to load those in and of course we're able to store them back to memory as well which we've done just here but once again, you will see that our command has actually become an extra byte longer. Here is our load D command here, and that is a three byte command. But when we have loaded the W with 3536, that has gained an extra byte. So again, using these alternate new registers is a little bit less efficient. But, you know, if we need to load 16 bit values into two registers for part of our code and as I say if we're using the stack pointers for other things maybe we can't use the stack and this is a way of being able to work with extra values without resorting to using memory or the stack in other ways so that's what we're doing here with using these values now as well of course we can combine all of our four 8-bit registers and effectively our two 16-bit registers into one 32-bit accumulator known as Q4 what I'll be calling the quad accumulator so here we're loading the 32-bit accumulator with this huge value here and you can see that it has been loaded into the, effectively into the two parts as I'm showing them on screen here. So personally I, I think that's quite fantastic seeing an eight what is effectively an 8-bit processor able to load a 32-bit value you won't see that very often and we can also store the 32-bit value back to memory so that's what we've done here so we've got this huge value there and of course this is a big engine system so it's in the exact same format in memory as it was in our source code. So that's how we can work with these new registers. Of course, we do still have all of our old registers and they all still, the 16 bit X and Y and things, they all still work the same as do our stack pointers. So if you need to know about those, I don't see why you would. If you need to know about them, please take a look at the 6809 tutorials or of course buy my book if you really wanna help me out. Okay, well, that's the new registers that work like the old registers, but we do have, of course, these new weird registers like the transfer value, which we can't. There's no LDV command or STV command. We can't do that. It can only work with really transfer commands. And so what we're doing here is we're transferring the W register into the V transfer value. And so you can see at this point, we had the W register with BA98 there, and we've transferred that into the V register, BA98 there. And again, um, on the um, Z80 systems, I'm often using the stack for other things other than working as a proper stack. So I often resort to using weird registers as uh, temporary stores while the stack is being used to read and write memory, for example. And so, you know, that's the kind of time that I might want to use one of these weird registers as a way of quickly storing a value to somewhere to get it back later without using the stack. Now, that's how we can use the V register. 
We of course have this zero register, which as I say with this assembler, we specify a Z, but you might specify the number zero depending on your assembler. So here we're transferring the value zero into the X register. And you can see the X register used to contain that value there. However, it's now been reset to zero. And so this is a way that we can um, use values and move the value zero into other registers and things if we want. And also, of course, we can effectively lose values if we want, if we want to move a value into nowhere if we want to run a command and have it do nothing we can actually transfer into zero and that might be useful for things like um, if we're using self-modifying code and things if we want to disable a line quickly rather than moving the value into the x register we could move the value into the zero register things like that might be useful now the final one of course is that we have this rather weird mode register which as i say we don't actually really need to play around with these commands but basically we can turn on native mode and just by loading the md register with the value one and that will set the bottom bit of the md register now native mode alters the way that the interrupts will occur we also have a fast irq option here and we can enable this and this will change the way that the registers are pushed onto the stack during an irq as i say though we don't really need them here though it's just to um just to make it clear that we have that new register as well being as we're going through them so that's our new registers let's have a look at some simple mathematics commands that have been extended and had new options added to them now of course we had before our um, clear commands uh, with these have now been extended though we had clears for a and b before however we now have clears for of course e and f so we can clear these down to zero quickly if we want to do so so you can see here we have cleared e and f here now before we could clear the eight bit values but we can now also clear the 16 bit d value so we can clear d all in one command and we can of course even clear the w register now, one thing that's interesting to note here, and this is where the 32-bit um, functionality is rather limited, we don't have clear for the quad re register here, the 32-bit quad register, so we would have to clear those in two parts if we wanted to do that. The 32-bit the, the functionality is fairly unsurprisingly, I suppose, rather limited. So we can clear all of these. We can also do incrementing. We can increment the two new 8-bit registers, but we can now increment the 16-bit registers as well. We can do an inc of D now, and we can also do an inc of W. Again, we can't do that with the 32-bit register, though, so we would have to do that in another way if we needed to do that. We have, of course, de decrement commands for those registers as well. And you can see that those are all being employed here. We've incremented the D register and we've incremented the two parts of W independently and the 16-bit W register on its own here. So you can see that W register has become 0102 there. Now, as well as incrementing and decrementing, we have new add commands we can add to E, F and W here. You can see we can do that. And we can do also subtractions of E, F and W here. And so you can see there we've done the additions there and you, we've then done subtractions there. And so we can do all of these to our new 16-bit registers. Although again, um, if we wanted to do things at 32 bits, we would actually have to do them on the two 16-bit parts separately with, uh, with carries and things like that. There were unfortunately not really very many 32-bit commands. But as I say, the, the the very fact that there is a 32-bit register and any 32-bit functionality on what is fundamentally an 8-bit processor I personally think is amazing. As I say, I, I am fully aware that this tutorial series is not very useful in a practical sense, but I just really found it quite fascinating, the extensions that they've done here. Well, what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to try out some of the new commands that have been added because um, as well as ad addition and subtraction of memory addresses and fixed values, we now have um, some new commands that actually work with registers themselves. And this might be the kind of time when using that transfer value may become a bit more useful. So what are we doing here? Well, we're loading the D register with one and then we're transferring the 16-bit D register to the 16-bit transfer value V. And then we're clearing the D register here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try some of these new add and subtract and add and subtract with carry commands. But you'll notice that there's an R on the end and the R means that we're working with two register values. So what we're effectively doing here is with add R is we're adding the value in the V register to the W register. And then we're subtracting the value in the V register from the D register. So we're able to now use two registers and the values in two registers directly here for addition and subtraction and addition with carry and subtraction with carry here. So you can see here that after clearing the D register, we've then added the V register to W and W has become one. 
and then we've subtracted the V register from D. Now D was cleared down to zero, but that has now become FFFF -F 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 here. We can then do an add with carry and a subtract with carry here. The add with carry has effectively set the W register to three, and the subtract with carry has set the D register to FFFE -F -F -E here. So as I say, we now have these extra options. Now, we don't have any 32-bit add and subtraction commands, but we can do this in two parts. What we can do is we can add a value to the W low 16-bit value, and we're adding 808 here, and then we can add with carry the value zero to the top part to carry any overflow through to the top of the 32-bit value. Now, you can see we've added that there. There hasn't been any overflow caused in this case. Um, we can also, of course, do the same thing with subtraction. Now, one interesting point is from what I read, it was supposed to be possible to do add CR here to add the zero register to the D part. Now, this didn't actually assemble, um, but I, I was told it should work. Now, one thing I did come across with when I was writing these tutorials is there is some commands that don't seem to be properly assembled by the um, the assembler I'm using, unfortunately. I think the truth of the matter is that the 6309 is so obscure that there's probably not been very much testing done to it, which I can fully understand. But as I say, in this case, it looks like that command should have worked according to the official documentation, but it wasn't possible. So I've had to add the immediate value zero here to carry any overflow across. Now we could just test this if we do a load of the Q register here with a value of all E's here. There's 32 bits worth of E's here. And then when we run again, this time when we add our 8008 to the 16-bit value in W here, that is overflowing that 16-bit value and it's overflowing via the carry into the top 16-bit value in D here. So that bottom nibble of E has become an F there. And that has stood, that's how we can use the two 16-bit parts to simulate a 32-bit add command. As I say, unfortunately, there isn't one there. Anyway, that's all we're covering today. We're going to be looking at more of this um, 6309. As I say, I, I just found it so weird and fascinating. And um, at the end of the day, even though it's not particularly useful to cover this from a programming point of view, all of these retro tutorials are just really looking at the weird and wonderful things people programmed and de developed back in the day. And I think this is a fantastically weird and wonderful one. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Thanks for watching. Go to the website, download the source, go have a go with yourself. Thanks for watching and goodbye.